Today we are looking at the American Express Blue Cash Preferred Credit Card, looking at everything about the card, whether it be the annual fee, the spending categories, all the hidden benefits, then wrapping up with doing some side-by-side -side card comparisons to other cards on the market that might be better suited for you. Oftentimes the Blue Cash Preferred can be overshadowed by other American Express cards on the market, most notably being the Amex Platinum and the Amex Gold Card. But if you're looking for just straight cash back, the Amex Blue Cash Preferred might be the best option and it will come with a lower annual fee compared to those more luxury based American Express cards. The card actually earned a spot on my 2024 top credit cards list. And I truly believe it's a hidden gem. I first wanna share with you guys some specifics behind the card, then dive into where you're gonna get the most cash back, some potential drawbacks with the card and finish up with a side-by-side -side comparison. With that being said, let's take a look at the American Express Blue Cash Preferred. One of the biggest questions surrounding every credit card is what is the annual fee? With the Blue Cash Preferred, it's a kind of a unique situation. For the first year, you will have zero annual fee, followed up with $95 annual fees after. I truly can't think of any other card on the market that has a similar situation where they don't have an annual fee for the introductory year, and then they will start charging you an annual fee. But even in that case, if you are someone that does not like annual fees and you're a little bit skeptical of carrying a card just because you're not sure you'll get the most value, typically cards with annual fees will either offer you higher spending categories to get more cash back, or they'll give you some statement credits. And that's exactly what we're gonna see in both cases with the Blue Cash Preferred. With the Amex Blue Cash Preferred, we're gonna see two different statement credits valued at $204, which will wipe away your annual fee if you do use them and actually give you some more value if you are meticulous and not letting them slide. The first of these statement credits is an $84 Disney bundle credit, and the second one is a $120 Equinox Plus credit. Taking a closer look at this Disney bundle credit, you will receive $84 distributed monthly, so you'll get $7 a month when you enroll in a Hulu subscription, Disney Plus, ESPN, or something of that nature that's marked here on the website. And then with our Equinox Plus credit, we can see here that that $120 will be distributed monthly as well, so you receive 12 $10 statements every single month. Once again though, if you are someone that already uses Disney, plus or you do go to equinox plus then this is just a great way to basically wipe away some costs that you do have associated with that if you are someone that doesn't think you'll use the disney plus or the other statement credit then maybe this isn't necessarily the most the biggest selling point for you but if you are on the edge and maybe you would like to start getting a subscription so you could watch disney at home or if you do want to start utilizing Equinox Plus, this might be a selling point to push you over the edge to get the Blue Cash Preferred. One thing I would avoid though, is just using these statements if it's something that you really won't take advantage of. Let's say that I'm someone that doesn't watch TV at all. I don't watch Hulu, Disney, ESPN, and it's just not my thing. Well, if I start enrolling in this just because they're offering me $84 over the course of the year, I'm pretty sure I'll be spending more on that subscription for something I won't use than I would if I just didn't use the statement credit outright. But a key lesson here is just make sure that you're reading what's necessarily involved with these statement credits. Oftentimes people might think that you'll get that huge lump sum distributed right into your account just immediately. Well, in reality, you're gonna get it after you enroll and make a payment and then they'll almost reimburse you. So I just make sure that you're understanding the full amount of statement credits. So that's gonna cover us on the annual fee and the statement credits associated with the Blue Cash Preferred. But now I wanna share the spending categories, which I truly believe is the biggest perk of carrying this credit card. We can see here that you are able to earn back 6% cash back on your groceries and 6% cash back on your streaming services. Additionally, we can earn 3% cash back on our transit, 3% cash back on our gas purchases, 1% cash back everywhere else. I do wanna note though that your 6% cash back on your groceries is capped at $6,000 each year. The reason I say this is not that I think that everyone's gonna go spend $6,000 and then be capped with how much cash back they can earn, but in some cases, if you do have a bigger family or you are spending a lot over the time, you might not be able to get the full extent, so just make sure that if they do hit that number, you flip over to another card so you don't miss cash back. Now, why I think this card is such a win is not just these numbers, that 6% is absolutely absurd for how much cash back you can get, but it's the locations that you're gonna be able to get cash back in. Groceries are a huge expense. In 2024, most people have some sort of streaming service, whether it's Hulu, Netflix, Spotify, whatever it may be. And then honestly, gas is something that you do have to budget in. It's something that we can't typically avoid if you do have to commute. So earning 3% cash back there with 6% on two other massive purchases 
you're going to be seeing a lot of cash back add up over time. Just a quick example to show how much cash back you can earn. Let's say I spend $400 a month on my groceries, which is pretty typical for myself given I don't eat out a lot and I do tend to buy in bulk. So with that 6% cash back each month, I'm going to be earning back $24 cash back. Now, if I expand that out to an entire year, assuming that I spend that $400 a month, I'm going to be able to earn $24 every single month, which will be $288 by the end of the year. That's basically a free month of groceries. If I do choose to put it towards that, I could just take that cash back and do something else with it. But it's just nice to see that when you do spend and you use the right card, you can earn back a ton of cash back. Overall though, the biggest perk here with this card is one, it has no fee for the first year, followed up with $95 annual fees, which is not that bad. You're gonna get some great statement credits that you can use, especially if they are applicable to something that you like with that Disney and Equinox Plus. And finally, the spending categories are absolutely awesome. 6% cash back on your groceries and streaming services, and that 3% on your transit and gas is really hard to beat, especially in 2024. Now, those are all the fun things and the flashy things to talk about with credit cards, but there are still some smaller things built into the Amex card that I do think are worth highlighting. First being that it is part of the American Express ecosystem, but second, there are some exclusive American Express offers that will come up with this card to allow you to get some elevated cash back. This might be earn 5% cash back on Amazon for a set number of purchases or earn 10% at McDonald's. These are just little pop-up places that will give you some more cash back depending on where you want to spend. Now certainly I would not rely on these Amex offers and you will see them with a lot of other cards out there such as the Chase cards or I'm sure City and Capital One have their own but it is something nice that really will help you get a little bit more cash back, especially if you only wanna carry one or two cards out there and don't have yourself covered at every single store that you're gonna spend at. There's also a couple little points I wanna highlight, especially the car rental loss and damage insurance, as well as the 24 seven travel hotline. These are just some extra little things that if you are traveling, even with this non-travel based credit card, Amex will be there to help you and cover you in some way, shape or form. Once again, American Express does not have to do this. They were probably perfectly fine not including that with this card. It is a little bit of the smaller print, but it's something that goes above and beyond and really makes this card stand out compared to others out there. We also will see some exclusive American Express experiences that will help us get some ticket sales early. We're gonna see some exclusive offers for maybe some entertainment near us. It just will vary, but it, once again, it's one of those things that Amex doesn't have to do, but they're doing to really make this card stand out. Finally, there are some additional services listed here on the screen that I encourage you to check out, especially if you are interested in getting this card. Just for the sake of time in this video, I'm gonna cut this out as they are pretty minute, but always go check out and read up on the card if going to apply. So everything that we've talked about with this card has been super positive and really highlights all the benefits of carrying it, but I do wanna highlight probably the most glaring downside of this card. And what I think it is, is that you cannot redeem your cash back for anything outside of cash back. So when you do earn cash back with this card, it will be earned in the form of rewards dollars, which is through American Express. This is different from what you will earn if you do carry the American Express Gold Card or the American Express Platinum Card. Those will be earned in the form of Amex points. Now I really want to emphasize the distinction and difference between these two. Rewards dollars are not the same as Amex points. I know in some other ecosystems, you can move points between cards but you cannot move points between the Amex Blue Cash Preferred and your Amex Gold and Platinum cards. Why this is such a downside in my opinion is because those rewards dollars can be redeemed for cash back. And if that's your goal, just to take cash back and put it into your wallet, that is absolutely awesome and I highly encourage you to get this card. It's not a downside. But for someone like myself that would love to maybe take advantage of travel, redemption for gift cards, and kind of a bunch of other things that are typically offered with other cards, I cannot do that if I carry the blue cash preferred and only get those rewards dollars. Another downside to this card is you will not have access to the American Express transfer partners. Those are going to be with the Amex Gold card, the Amex Green, and the Amex Platinum. Like I said though, Amex points are a separate thing compared to what we will be earning with the Amex Blue Cash Preferred. So the biggest thing here, if you are looking to just get cash back, I highly encourage you to continue looking at this card. But if a make or break for you is the options that you can use your cash back on and you'd love to travel and put it towards transfer partners and maybe gift cards, 
I probably might rule out the Amex Blue Cash Preferred and look closer at another card, and I'll mention some later, that might give you something more tailored to what you want, such as the Amex Gold card. Now, the reason I think that this is such a downside is American Express is one of the best ecosystems out there, especially for point value redemption. And if you thought you were going to be able to redeem for points, then you would have found this as kind of a rude awakening when you realize you couldn't and you only have these rewards dollars. There's 21 transfer partners with Amex. I'm going to continue mentioning this in case you do want to know more about Amex and other cards. So there's those 21 transfer partners that will allow you to get 18 transfer partners for airlines and three for hotels to get the most out of every point that you spend. Typically, your cash back will be worth one cent per point, and that's awesome. But if you want to use those transfer partners, it can be worth up to 2.8 cents per point, which will just show you how much further you can really take points instead of that straight cash back. So comparing later, we'll see the gold card against the blue cash preferred. But yes, you'll earn 6% cash back compared to the four times points with the gold card on groceries. But with the options with the gold card and the extra benefits you can get if transferring out, you're going to see actually more value towards the gold card compared to the blue cash preferred, even though it might have that higher percentage that you're going to be earning immediately. As I mentioned, there's 18 transfer partners for airlines with Amex if you are interested. Some key ones here are Delta, Emirates, JetBlue, and Virgin Atlantic. And then on the hotel side of things, if you're interested, there's Choice Privileges, Marriott Bonvoy, and Hilton Honors. Fortunately, if you are going to get this card, you won't have access to those great transfer partners. So I just bring this up to show that if that's your end of term goal that you would love, then I'd look at another card. If that's something that doesn't matter to you, don't worry about it. I do want to highlight some other credit cards that I think could be very applicable to any situation you're in that also will give you a fair amount of cashbacks on the same categories, being groceries and potentially gas. These two cards are the American Express Gold Card and the American Express Blue Cash Every Day. Looking at all three cards side by side, we see with it the Blue Cash Preferred, we have no annual fee for the entire first year, followed up with $95 annual fees after. With the Amex Gold Card, we're going to have a $250 annual fee. Then we'll have the Amex Blue Cash Everyday card, which has no annual fee at all. Now, all cards are part of the American Express ecosystem, which I believe is an absolute win. It's a great ecosystem that's very reputable. And I know that there's some things where people are like, oh, it can't be accepted everywhere. Most places are going to take Amex cards. I wouldn't be too worried about that. And if you can't use your Amex card for, say, I'm at Costco, it's whatever. Use your debit card once. Get a Visa card. Don't read too far into that. I do want to highlight though, with these three cards, we know that the Blue Cash Preferred card is going to earn us those rewards dollars. With the Amex Gold card, we're going to earn American Express points. And with the Blue Cash Everyday card, we're also going to earn rewards dollars. This means that just the Amex Gold card is going to give us access to those transfer partners and some more flexibility with point redemption. Looking at the statement credits though, we see that with the Blue Cash Preferred, we had $204 worth of statement credits. With the American Express Gold Card, we're going to have $340 worth of statement credits. And then with the no annual fee Blue Cash Every Day card, we're actually going to have $264 worth of statement credits. And these statement credits will vary between cards. With the Blue Cash Preferred, we saw that Disney bundle credit. And with the Gold Card, we're going to get some cash back for Uber. So I definitely check out which one will fit you better before deciding between a card. Let's take a look at the spending categories now. With our Blue Cash Preferred, we saw that we'll get 6% on our groceries, 6% on our streaming services, as well as 3% on our transit and gas. With the American Express Gold Card, we're gonna be able to earn four times points back on our dining and four times points back on our grocery purchases, as well as three times points back on our flights purchased through American Express. Finally, the Blue Cash Everyday Card is gonna give us 3% back on our groceries, 3% back on our gas, and 3% back on our online retail purchases. Comparing these cards side by side, you can see that each really shines in its own way. American Express Gold Card is fantastic as it will give us access to some transfer partners and it does give us cash back in the form of their points. The Blue Cash Preferred has some really high spending categories to maximize our cash back, especially that 6% back on our streaming services and groceries. On the other hand, the Blue Cash Everyday Card also has some great spending categories. It has no annual fee and it actually has a surprising amount of statement credits higher than cards with annual fees. I'll also have in-depth reviews on both other cards mentioned, so be sure to check those out. I'll link them down below in the description. As a whole though, I don't think you can go wrong getting the Blue Cash Preferred. In 2024, the spending categories are very relevant with some of the highest grocery and gas prices we've seen. 
There's great utility with this card with the staining credits, no fee for the first year, followed with $95 annual fees after, which I have to say is very reasonable for what you're getting. As we saw though, there are some downsides and little things to know about the card before applying, such as you're only gonna get those rewards dollars, but if that's something that doesn't matter to you, then go right ahead and get this card. If you are interested in another Amex card, be sure to check out the gold or the blue cash every day, or even the Amex platinum card. And if you're interested in any other credit card review, be sure to like and subscribe, and also check out my playlist on credit card reviews and tips. Aside from that, I appreciate you guys watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video.